the one thing Richard does right here is he goes up and he pitches him. I think so many times like we we pause and we're like, oh, I don't want to bother him, right? And he obviously was pretty bothered, uh, but it didn't matter. Like Richard just like went up and he pitched him. And ultimately, like later on in the series, like we're, we'll see, like the investor comes back because he's interested. And that would not have happened if he had not gone up and asked. If you don't ask, the answer is no. So Silicon Valley, the TV show is a little bit old, but it's one of my favorite shows because I mean, it's super funny on the on the surface level, but the more you understand about venture capital and startups and so forth, like there are just so many depths and layers to the comedy. So today I thought I would share a clip that I think is really funny, but also hopefully instructional too. So it's the part where Richard totally bombs his elevator pitch. We're gonna dissect what he does, where his mistakes were, and where you could do better if you had the opportunity to pitch to Peter Thiel. I thought this clip was super interesting and, and worth kind of reviewing prior to diving into the, the elevator pitch. Though this character, Gregory, he's supposed to be based on Peter Thiel. And Peter Thiel actually gave this speech on TED Talk and basically said, like, college is a scam. And then he backed it up and he launched what's called the Thiel Fellow Program. The Thiel Fellow Program basically was this, like, offer where he went out to really bright, well, he had people apply, but uh, really bright... Uh, college students and even you know kids that hadn't even started college yet and said instead of going to college I will give you a hundred thousand dollars and you will be part of this two-year program almost like an accelerator a startup accelerator and we will train you we will guide you we will support you to launch companies or, or whatever like world-changing thing that you have ambition to do and uh, what's interesting is so he started that in 2011 there have been uh, almost 230 uh, tail fellows to date. And outside of the founder of Ethereum, uh, which is like, you know, $400 billion of value or something crazy like that, these tail fellows have started companies that are valued at over $47 billion. So, you know, crazy in terms of like the impact you could argue that these various startups and companies and, and fellows have had through his program. And uh, you know, I honestly have a nuanced opinion of college to be 100% honest. Like, I think that college is really expensive. It doesn't need to be as expensive as it is. And I think we could accomplish so much more by just like simply tweaking our educational model. But anyways, that's my two cents. Let's keep watching and let's see how Richard does on his elevator pitch. Anything? Eh, usual rest on Twitter and Instagram. Nothing I'd fund. <laughs> Okay, so what she says there is usually like riffs off of Twitter and Instagram. So what she's saying is basically he's he's like, is there anything interesting, you know, company wise that we could fund? And she's like, well, it's a bunch of like me too's, right? It's like Twitter for like pet owners or something. Um, and the funny thing to me about that is that as soon as like one company becomes successful. Uh, and they don't even have to be all that successful, frankly, like they just have to have like a surprising like they acquisition or, you know, valuation or whatever. Um, but as soon as like somebody has like this novel idea and it becomes successful, then like immediately there are like a million entrepreneurs that like latch onto that and they do, it's what we call like this for that. So it's like Twitter for that, right? Twitter for pet owners. If you're an entrepreneur, like you do not want to be uh, an iterative startup, right? You don't really wanna just take somebody else's really great idea and just tweak it a little bit uh, because that's not what venture capitalists fund. We want to fund kind of the zero to one. If you think about that iteration, iterative type startup, it's like going from one to two. And you know, that's probably even more funny because Peter Thiel wrote the book zero to one with this idea of like going from like hotels to Airbnb and renting out part of your, your house or your whole house or room or whatever. That is like very much like zero to one, right? Like Airbnb did not exist before that. And yet today, like, well, actually I remember when Airbnb came out and started getting like real momentum and success, uh, there were so many like Airbnb for this, Airbnb for that. And tons of them just like raised money and then failed. Cause it's just really hard to build something successful if all you're doing is kind of going from one to two. And it's really hard to attract the very best investors cause they're looking for that zero to one, that huge disrupted, disruptive technology or company. 
Hi, excuse me, Mr. Gregory. Um, I have a, an idea. I'd love to pitch you if you have time. Ooh. Uh, uh, well, that is before uh, I just give up and go back to college. Don't do not do that. Go work at Burger King. Go into the woods and forage for nuts and berries. Do not go back to college. I think I have been played. Fine. Go ahead and pitch. You have until I fasten the seat belt in my car. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so first of all, the one thing Richard does right here is he goes up and he pitches him. I think so many times, like, we, we pause and we're like, oh, I don't want to bother him, right? And he obviously was pretty bothered, uh, but it didn't matter. Like, Richard just, like, went up and he pitched him. And ultimately, like, later on in the series, like, we're, we'll see, like, the investor comes back because he's interested. And that would not have happened if he had not gone up and asked. If you don't ask, the answer is no. So the first rule in elevator pitches is have some confidence in your startup and get up there and pitch it, right? Go bother people. Because here's the thing, if you are solving something that's like truly important and really has, it creates real value in the lives of people, then you should feel confident about it and you should be evangelizing it and helping people know about it. And you shouldn't feel ashamed, right? Even if you're gonna bother them, you should just say in your head like, hey, I'm gonna bother this person. This person might be bothered at first, but once they really understand it the way I do, they'll be grateful that I took that time and had the courage to, to pester them about it. And then the next thing that he does that I think is really good is, you know, the investor's like, ah, like, please don't bother me. I get pitched all the time right mentality but he comes up with like a unique angle to get the investor's attention just like any sort of icebreaker you want to figure out some way to catch their attention maybe it's like an interesting stat they didn't know about your business right like hey did you know that you know 30 percent of blah 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 like i'll give you a good example uh i went to this this pitch event this company gets on stage and they're like we are an app for bird watchers and i was like seriously like an app for bird watchers and this was this was years ago this was like probably 10 years ago and everybody in the audience kind of like laughed and they're like haha like is there even really a market for that and then they were like there are uh several million people that are avid bird watchers and that represent even if we get like a small percentage of them that represents a very large market opportunity um in this space. And so that was like a huge like light bulb. It's like, wow, there are that many like very avid bird watchers out there. I had no idea. So I was hooked and I wanted to learn more about their business after learning kind of that interesting fact. All right, let's see how he does with the rest of the pitch. Thank you so much. Uh, a Pied Piper is a proprietary site that lets you find out if your music is infringing on any existing copyrights. So imagine you're a songwriter, okay? I don't think I could write a song. Okay, so he throws out like a ton of jargon, like we are Pied Piper, we are a proprietary, right? So what you want to do, and he starts getting in, into this, but he doesn't get into it fast enough, in my opinion, because he starts like, imagine you're a song, blah, 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 which can be actually like a great tool where you say, hey, put yourself in the shoes of this person. Let me describe what their pain point feels like. Because in many cases, your investor is not going to be the customer, right? They're not going to fully understand the pain point. And your job as an entrepreneur is to very quickly and effectively communicate that pain in such a way that they can almost feel it. And the more that they can feel that pain point, like the more you've, you, you've hit it. Um, because then once they feel that pain point, they recognize, hey, there's a pain here. Then you can bring the medicine of your solution and help start solving that pain point. Yeah, no, just look, imagine if you were. I don't even think I could say Pied Piper is a proprietary site. Well, I just did, but it wasn't easy. Look, I, crunching all those songs to find matches sounds like it would take incredible processing power. Yes. Yes, it does. Okay, so this is really interesting. So she comes in and she's like, hey, this just doesn't sound possible because the processing power and so forth in order to do what you're you're proposing, like technology and hardware just hasn't caught up to that that stage yet. And that is the single most important thing about his startup, right? 
And it's, he probably wasn't even going to talk about that in his elevator pitch. So what you need to figure out is like, what is the one thing or the few things that really matter, that really differentiate your startup from anybody else's? And you want to hit on those super early in your elevator pitch as well. No, no, it's, it's I have, I, have, I made a, an algorithm. Look, why don't you send me a link to your project and we'll take a look. Okay, yeah, great. I put the prototype up on GitHub. It's so, uh, Pied Piper. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll... It's like that, uh, the fable, you know, with the, with the kids and then the, the rats and the music. And the... That is a narrow car. Fucking billionaires. Okay, so... How do you do a good elevator pitch? Well, I'll give you just some really quick tips because we're already pretty long on this video. But first, help the investor or the person you're pitching feel the pain point as quickly as possible. So the first thing he should have said is, okay, imagine that you have spent your life building this music and all of a sudden you start seeing various other artists and distributors start picking up your melody and other things and start producing that music and stealing your life's work from you and you have no recourse. We have solved that with our proprietary algorithm that compresses the, the audio files and accelerates the, the processing speed and all of these things so that it actually makes it solvable. And we've been able to do this when nobody else has. I would love to tell you more about it and walk you through a demo, right? When can we do that? Doing it that way, you hit the pain point super early, you identify what's the thing that makes you super unique, and then there's a call to action, right? When can we do a demo and walk you through it and get their contact information? That would have been a lot more effective than what he did. He just kind of lucked out that she was willing to actually look him up on GitHub, because I'll tell you, like, I get so many business cards, I talk to so many people, and the number of companies that I actually end up going back and doing research on is very, very small. And so you need to figure out when the, when the iron is hot, you got to strike uh, and you got to get that contact info. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that react. I'm going to do a bunch more reacts to Silicon Valley, so stay tuned to those. And in the meantime, check out some of my other videos, like my Shark Tank react, where I react to the books. Thanks.